Yes, I did it. Woo! Finally, after almost 30 years of endless dieting, yo-yoing up and down, I finally achieved my dream of weight loss success. I lost over 100 pounds with the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting lifestyle and finally landed at a healthy weight. So now what? Pizza? Pie? <gasps> Potato chips? Pop? Hmm. Wrong answer. Stick around and I'll let you know what's working for me and hopefully it can also work for you. As promised last week, I'm back with another episode of Five on Fridays to talk about what my keto and intermittent fasting lifestyle looks like now that I'm in maintenance. And before we get started, just a reminder, I'm not a healthcare provider, I'm just a blessed girl sharing my story, hopefully to inspire, motivate, encourage you in your own healing and weight loss journey. I suppose we should start with where I came from. This is a picture of me back in 2015 at my very heaviest weight of 230 pounds. I was obviously very overweight, suffering from chronic exhaustion, sleep apnea, fatty liver disease, chronic migraines and headaches, and so on and so on. So I set off on my ketogenic and intermittent fasting lifestyle journey on January 13th, 2017, and I've never looked back. One of the most common questions I get is how long did it take me? So I have to tell you that I set a goal weight of 126 pounds and I was able to reach that goal weight on January 9th, 2018. So it took me about a year to lose the significant amount of the weight that I have lost. Today I wanna to share with you five things that I am doing now to maintain my weight loss of over a year and a half now which is incredible to me because all of my former weight loss journeys always ended up in failure where I would regain my weight and typically I would regain extra weight. For example, when I did the liquid shake diet, I think I lost about 65 pounds and eventually I got to the point where I was more than 100 pounds overweight. What am I doing now that I've finally found a healthy weight? First of all, I am sticking with the plan and I'm not deviating. This lifestyle works so well for my metabolism that there's absolutely no way I'm ever going back to a sad diet or a high carb diet making myself sick and fat again. No way. I learned the science of low carb living. I applied the science of low carb living. I tweaked it a lot on my journey. I had to figure out what worked for me. And because I learned and I applied and I tweaked, I changed my life. So I'm going to stick with it. And part of sticking with it is always challenging myself. If you've been following me at all for any time, you know I'm a huge goal setter. I encourage you to do the same, always challenging yourself. Now is not the time to get lazy in your lifestyle. All right, the second thing I do is I continue to use the tools that I used when I was on my weight loss journey. Tools like the scale, the tape measure, and now that I'm at a healthy weight, one of the tools I use is my size two jeans. If those still fit, I've got nothing to worry about. And yes, I know some of you absolutely hate the scale and that's okay, but for me, it's a very useful tool and I'll tell you why. When I did do the liquid shake protein diet, I lost a significant amount of weight. And as I started going into maintenance and they were reintroducing things like pasta and whole healthy grain bread, I stopped weighing myself because it didn't take long for me to realize that the weight was starting to creep back on and I was in denial. I had just spent 10 months of my life eating nothing but liquid shakes. <sighs> that was so hard. And then I just entered a state of denial and despair as I realized that even eating the whole healthy foods that the dietitians were telling me to eat was causing me to gain weight. I'm not obsessed with the scale now, but I do use it as a very important tool to help monitor my healthy weight. All right, the third 
thing I want to talk to you about is my low carb food. During the weight loss part of my journey, I stuck with a very strict ketogenic diet, 20 grams of carbs or less per day. I only eat two meals a day, so that meant 10 grams of carbs or less per meal. And that obviously worked very well for me. I did change my macronutrient counter in my Carb Manager app to be 30 grams net carbs a day, but there's very rarely a day that I go over 20 net carbs a day now. I've loosened up a little bit, like maybe I will have a salad and a side of like cauliflower rice instead of just cauliflower rice. For example, I'm not gonna freak out if my carb count goes over 20 grams net a day. If there's a day that my carb count is a little higher than normal, I'm still checking occasionally my blood ketones in the morning with my Keto Mojo. And I am consistently always in ketosis. So I don't think going a little over 20 grams of carbs a day is hurting my lifestyle. And there is nothing in my life that I gave up to follow this lifestyle that I am craving or desiring or needing to eat. I don't need to eat pizza. I don't need to eat pie. I don't need to eat potato chips and I don't ever need to drink pop. <laughs> I never was much of a pop drinker anyhow so that wasn't much of a challenge to give up. But anyhow. Oh, before we move on to the next topic, if you were following my blog in June, you may remember that I made a little confession about getting in trouble with nuts. Yeah, they were making the body fat percentage on my scale go up. So I had to nip that in the bud real quick. And I decided to include that as part of my jump start into June because I needed a little bit of a reset. So I will leave the link to that blog series below. Go ahead and check it out. So the fourth thing I'd like to talk about in my maintenance life is one of my favorite topics that I'm not supposed to talk about and you know what it is. It is fasting. Woo! I still love fasting. Now, as I mentioned in my video last week, during my weight loss journey, I did a lot of weekly alternate day fasting. My favorite schedule to follow for fasting was three days a week times 42 hours for each fast. And then on the days I wasn't doing that, I always followed an 18-6 fasting and eating window. And that worked extremely well for me during my weight loss journey. I still absolutely believe in the amazing healing properties of fasting. So fasting will always be part of my lifestyle. Especially the 18-6 fasting and feasting time-restricted eating schedule. That's always going to be playing a part in my lifestyle because I am not a breakfast eater and I don't typically get hungry until about 11, 11.30 in the morning, which is a perfect time to break my fast. I'm also going to incorporate, and I have recently been incorporating a little bit longer fasting windows, some 24s, some 36s, and some 42s just because I can, just because it fits with my schedule, just because I have a busy day. And just because now that I'm in menopause, I want to be ever cognizant and always on top of the fact that, that my hormonal body is going to want to start packing on extra fat to protect my menopausal self. But the best benefit that I've learned about fasting through this entire journey is how to listen to my body when I need to eat, I eat. When I'm being fueled by fat and have lots of energy, I don't need to eat. Fasting is the most amazing tool to help you control hunger and keep your weight maintained. And last but not least, the fifth thing I want to share today, how I maintain my lifestyle is through a lot of prayer. It is not lost on me at all who I need to give thanks to you for this miracle of healing and my weight loss journey. I thank God every day. I praise him that he has delivered this lifestyle to me. He provides whole healthy foods that I can eat. He set me on this path and showed me this lifestyle that worked so miraculously for me. So every day, 
I pray and thank him for this. Well, that's my life in maintenance. I'm 52 years old now and I plan on living this lifestyle pretty much exactly the same way for the next 52 years. Before you go, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, click the little box in the corner of the video and make sure to check me out on my social sites, which I'll also leave below. I love to connect with people. I'm most active on Instagram. You can catch me there. And if you need to get in touch with me with a personal question, you can go ahead and find me on the contact page through my website. I do return all emails, so feel free to send me some quick questions and I'd be happy to get back to you. And one last thing, have a very happy weekend and as always, make sure to choose joy. Bye.